Having a healthcare provider who is LGBTQ competent, especially a healthcare provider who comes from that community, is really important because it's important to feel seen in healthcare. In fact, I think the important word in healthcare is the word care. My name is Yona Tengi. I'm the Vice President for Education at GLAMA, Health Professionals Advancing LGBTQ Equality. I'm a healthcare provider at Whitman Walker Health. Growing up, I was oftentimes in hospitals and I had a very positive association and it just felt like the future inside the building. And so I always had this sort of like adoration for medicine. In terms of my coming of age, I was a pre-professional ballet dancer. In my senior year of high school, I threw out my back, which just solidified my trajectory into medicine. I saw firsthand growing up just naturally the issues affecting this community, being part of this community as well. And so when I went into college and started to pursue the career of medicine, my main goal was to be a healthcare provider that was like those people. In terms of my direct clinical care, my patient population is very varied. One of the wonderful things about Women Walker is we practice in what's called the comprehensive and integrated primary care model, which means we try to not silo people's care. So in a given day, I might be doing primary care and preventative medicine, as well as HIV and PrEP care. And then I also do gender affirming care. And my main focus actually across the board is on people living with substance use disorders. But I also treat a lot of queer people specifically who are living with substance use disorders, both stimulant and depressant substance use disorders. And I really love doing that. With GLAMO, as the Vice President for Education, work a lot in curating our educational content so that way we can train healthcare providers to be better healthcare providers for LGBTQ people. And for me, doing these two things in tandem is really wonderful because working at a community health clinic, we are the safety net provider. We see the end effects of a lot of the structural problems with our healthcare infrastructure in this country. And so it's very easy to become burnt out. But one of the ways that I specifically avoid burnout is that I work with Glamma and I get to do advocacy on the national stage. Some of the biggest concerns for LGBTQ people trying to access healthcare are cost, and then also not being able to access care that is for them, and also being written off by their healthcare providers because of their gender identity. I have a lot of patients who are afraid. They walk in, they ask how much everything costs, and they're distrustful of healthcare providers. Sometimes with assimilationist attitudes, we forget that queer people do have specific health problems that are different than our peers. And so it's important that providers are knowledgeable about these differences, know how to care for us in a way that is respectful as well. What we see a lot of the times is that patients who are LGBTQ go in to access healthcare and they're told to go somewhere else. Go to the LGBTQ clinic, go to this other provider who does gender affirming care. And what we see when that care isn't integrated is that patients do worse. It becomes more difficult for them to take charge of their own health care. What inspires me to keep on working in LGBTQ health, it's really because I believe it's a privilege to serve these communities. 